And we're recording. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Whoa. Welcome to TBR Lowdown. I think you blew out some people's ears with that. I'm just so excited. You are so excited. <laughs> Jeez Louise. Oh my goodness. Yeah. It's been a minute. Yeah. It's been a minute. It has been. It's we been haven't a little recorded bit. since uh, June? Before I had COVID. I don't remember when I had COVID. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. That's so here we that. are. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. So here we are. Here we are. We're back. We're back in the in the groove we're back with some anticipated reads Mm -hmm. for fall winter to get you through the rest of the year yeah and uh we've got jesus behind me dropping shit hey he's my buddy yeah he jesus is your buddy he's my buddy he he walks with you and he talks with you he does Mm -hmm. don't make me start singing them bible camp songs The indoctrination was strong. Okay. <laughs> and I, I'm not here, Jesus. I'm we have his voice in the podcast and I am leaving it in, just so you know. Tell him. Tell him I'm leaving it in. I shall tell him nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, maybe one day we can convince him to read a book with I us mean, so we can he, chat about it on the show. Yeah. Maybe one day. He's one day. taking he's carrying Alfie downstairs right now. Oh, that's funny. That's funny. Make sure, I don't know if you did it or not. Make sure you share with our folks on our TBR Lowdown Instagram your new your new doggy babies. I will. I will. I will share the babies. Um, right now, the babies are getting screamed at by their father so that they can go for a walk. So. Oh, <laughs> also, are we going to get the um, holiday photo of the doggies? Are you going to do that this year? Did I do one last year? I don't think I did. Henry you didn't so... do it last year. You didn't do it last year. But are, are we going to, now that you got your two babies and they're getting settled, are we going to get our holiday photo? Oh, I mean, we can. I can do a photo. I love it. I'm trying to figure out what they're going to do for their Halloween costumes. Mercy has um, bat wings, but I don't know what to put on Alfie. I'll figure it out. I might Every get him like a lion. Every time I hear scene. the name, I think about that song, you know, what's it all about? Alfie. God. I always think about it. Every time you say that dog's name, that song. I just want you to know that that song is like a generational divide. (laughs) Really? And we we are on one side or the other of it. Because I had no (laughs) idea what that song was until I named my dog Alfie. And then everybody over like 45. Oh, yes. Like, yeah. What's it all about? (laughs) Yeah. It's such a beautiful song. And I'm like, you okay? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Every time. He had no interest. Uh, But yeah, no. That's his name, Alfredo Potato. I love it. He's a sweetie. (laughs) Unless you're listening from the rescue group and then his name is 100% alien. I didn't definitely did not change it because he definitely knew his name. Mm -hmm. He definitely did not. Um, He just, he does know Alfie. He's he's picked up on that. He's smart. That's good. That's but good. we did, I did, I did get a new dog in between for any listeners who wasn't paying attention to anything else in my life um, while we were not here. Uh, I did get a second dog. His name is Alfie. He is also a greyhound and he is very sweet, but very dumb. He is a boy. And uh, <laughs> we love him dearly. I love that. He's really, really cute. Your dogs are beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. Mercy's quite a beautiful girl, I will say. She's a very beautiful yes. dog. And rest in peace, Hemi and Turbo. We will never forget you. We still love you so much with all our hearts. Miss you and love you. I miss them so much. Don't make me cry, please. I won't. I won't. I've cried enough with me. I always want to give them love. They're good boys. They were good boys. Yeah. But yeah. Anyway, what have you been reading? Everything. <laughs> So, um, in our welcome back episode, we gave you all a little sneak peek and shared with you some of the books that we're going to be reading and discussing on the show. And one of those books is Private Rights by 
Julia Armfield, whom is officially a favorite author of mine. I'm not done with this book. I'm just like uh, 95 pages in. Um, but we read Our Wives Under the Sea. I think that was our TBR Lowdown December 2022 pick or something mm -hmm. like that. So we read that book and discussed that book. Fantastic. If you never read it, pick it up. Um, and then I read her debut short story collection called Salt Slow, either last month or two months ago. Brilliant. I just, that mind of hers, gotta love it. And now I'm reading uh, Private Rights. So um, these four, is it four or three or four sisters? So these sisters are dealing with the death of their father. And from where I am in this book, these sisters have issues, okay? This is not like a happy get along, you know, gang of sisters. Uh, two of the sisters have one mother. The third sister has another mother. And there's a whole backstory behind how all that came about. So there's lots of like contention and, you know, tiny little grievances about, you know, how things came about and how they grew up. And it, it is not a good time with these sisters getting back together to deal with the death of their father. And I can't help but when I was reading um, the beginning of this, I kept thinking about that movie called um, Hanging Up, Hanging Up with uh, Meg Ryan, Diane Keaton, and Lisa Kudrow. Like they had this mm. sick father and, you know, they were all living very different lives and all had all kinds of grievances with one another and um, dealing with the, the, the illness that their father was going through. And I kind of thought about that while reading the beginning of this book. So um, I'm enjoying it and I can't wait for us to read it together and discuss it, but I'm absolutely enjoying it right now. I love the back and forth with these sisters. It just feels very real, very relatable and I'm digging it. And I can't wait to see like where we go with private rights. So stay tuned for that discussion. And that's already out in the UK. We both have covered uh, oh, yes. uh, editions from the UK. It's not out in the States yes. until December. Yes, that's right. That's so correct. That's correct. I'm going to assume we won't be airing that episode until closer to December. Exactly. December. Which the really States. is around the corner. It's 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 closer than anybody would probably like it to be. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I really, well, I really loved uh, Our Wives Under the Sea. I haven't read, yeah. was it Salt Slow? You um, love it. Yeah. And I would, so I was already sold on private rights, but uh, what really sold me, like double down sold me was, did you see that like clip of her around pub day in the UK where she was reading it? No. Like, the, the, oh, just listening to her read the beginning of the book. I was like, mm, if I ever had a glimmer of a doubt, it is gone. Uh, wow. Yeah. Uh, you can okay. dig that up on ye old internet. I uh, sure um, will. Yeah. So this I'm very is, excited. This is yes, I'm excited as well. Uh, this is not. So this is an abridged new special, like illustrated edition of the book that I'm currently listening to. Um, I do not have the regular edition because I have this edition and this is beautiful. And that is an uh, Entangled Life by Merlin Sheldrake. And this is just all about fungi. And um, I love it. And I, it has beautiful photos in it. Um, I like. Oh, gosh, it's gorgeous. Obsessed with mushrooms. Not that I like to eat them. I just I find them or drink like, them like I do. Up. Uh, no, um, I don't do that either. You weirdo. Um, I love you dearly. Uh, but I just find them beautiful. They're also That's really beautiful. Cool. They do like so much. Um, they, they're just fascinating. And, and like, I think something like, and I could be wrong, but the, there's more like mushroom on the planet yeah. than there is like anything else. Cause it, it the mycelium runs like under every inch of ground and, um, they're just using mushrooms for so many things and they are just so, so important to our ecosystem and they're beautiful and the, they like nourish us. They can kill us. They can fix us. They can fix the environment. Um, they're fascinating, fascinating little creatures. And I, I love them. And I am going to call them a creature because they are closer to animals than they are to plants. So mm. anybody out there who's listening is like, they're not a creature. Okay. Shut up. Anyway, shut that's up. That's <laughs> beautiful. That's really beautiful. That, that, that's a beautiful book. 
Yeah. So I've always wanted to read it and my library hold for the audiobook finally came in. And so I'm listening to it. And, um, so I've already flipped through the book about a thousand times, Yeah, but, um, I wish I had a physical copy of the actual book because, or I wish this wasn't abridged, but mm-hmm, it, mm-hmm. it's really good. It's very interesting. Um, the, I'm very early on still, and we're talking about like truffles and truffle farming and it's just, mushrooms are just so cool. And yeah. um, I, I love them. So that's amazing. Yeah. That's, that's, that's nice. That's nice. I love it. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm. So, yes. Anyway, so we have fancy graphics. Uh, so we will be uh, discussing our anticipated reads for autumn winter of 2024 did i spell autumn right i don't know anyway um <laughs> it looks like i did so 2024 and the beginning of 2025 yeah and 2025 yeah uh i forgot i always forget that there's new years anyway so i guess we will kick it off uh these don't go these kind of go in pub date order so one of us will kind of talk about it. I don't know even know. I don't know how many we have. I don't even think we have an even number of them. I think I just put some in, you put some in and here we are. I do have one autumn prevention, which is Sally Rooney's new book, which is going to be out now as of the time of you guys listening to it. It's Mm -hmm. uh, going to be out on Tuesday when we're recording. Uh, And I um, may have found a way to get myself a little e arc of it. So I have been making my way through it and this is so good. Uh, It is, typical Sally Rooney you are talking about people their emotions it's very quiet it's introspective it's about relationships um you have two brothers their father has just died um their mother is alive and remarried um one brother is like a lawyer the other brother is uh, like 20 something and he's a chess whiz and definitely like autistic coded in some way neurodivergent coded in some way mm. And you're following them and their relationships with other people, with each other, with uh, their grief over their dad. It's so well done. I have been going so slowly through this book and I just don't want it to end. Um, Mm. I'm like 60% of the way through and I just have been savoring every second. And I do have both editions coming to the house because I could not choose. I I don't know which cover I like more. I love the UK Um, cover a lot. Yeah, and it's 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 interesting. It's like a little jarring at first because the older brother's head space is very like chaotic a little bit, and mm-hmm. I so there's like very little punctuation. It's very like stream of consciousness, um, and then other sections are a little bit more easier to read because you're not in that kind of frantic headspace. So it, yeah. it is really beautifully done, and I cannot wait to make you read this and then yes. discuss it on the podcast. So I'm excited yeah. because you're excited. I am very excited. I'm like very you excited. are a Rooney fan. You have read all of her books, correct? Mm-hmm. Yes. And I, I just read No More People. It was this year, right? I think this year. Mm-hmm. So, and mm-hmm. I, and I really did enjoy No More People. Um, yeah, I really did enjoy that. So I, I think eventually I'll make my way to reading the others, but I'm excited about this one because you're so excited. I am very excited about it. It's very, very good. It's, it's, it's very interesting. I think I like the way Sally Rooney dissects people. I like how sort of sparsely she does her writing as well. Um, she's not overly writing anything. It is, I find it really easy to relate to. Uh, Mm -hmm. She is like the millennial writer, you know, (laughs) like she is writing for, for like people who like me you know like yeah that is so i i really i really do enjoy her i'm not afraid to be a basic bitch and love sally rooney but i think you see that <laughs> just All has right. to go i can't go unmentioned i think that we would be not doing our jobs if we did not talk right. about the book everybody knows is coming out <laughs> absolutely um, so the realist <laughs> and we start with you yeah shred sisters by betsy Lerner, who i do not know anything about this author, but I like how this book sounds. It says, no one will love you more or hurt you more than a sister. I've also been reading a lot of books lately about sisters. You know, I love all those Mm -hmm. family dynamics. Um, So uh, this is out from Grove Atlantic on October 1st. So get your pre-orders in. Uh, And it says... uh, it is said that when one person in a family is unstable, the whole family is destabilized. Meet the shreds. 
Olivia is a sister in the spotlight until her stunning confidence becomes erratic and unpredictable. A hurricane leaving people wrecked in her wake. Younger sister Amy, cautious and studious to the core, believes in facts, proof, in the empirical world. None of that explains what's happening to Ollie, whose physical beauty and charisma mask the mental illness that will shatter Amy's carefully constructed life. I mean, I'm in. That's it. I'm in. Yeah. I'm excited for it. I, I will be pre-ordering that. I almost put this on the list, so I was glad to see that you had it on there so that yeah. uh, we can have... We can have variety. Actually, yes. we had no duplicates this time. Usually we have duplicates. So I know. I thought that was very interesting of us. I tried to get my list to you like before today so that, you know, if we did have any dupes, we could rectify that. There's one that yeah. you have on your list that I purposely left off of mine because I knew you were going to select it. Oh, is mm -hmm. it this one? It sure is. <laughs> <laughs> so Model Homes by Reverse Solomon. It is out on the first from FSG. And we are stands of River Sullivan. I've read The Deep and the, what's the other one that we read? Sorrowland? Sorrowland. And then, Fantastic. And then I don't know if they have any other books. They might. And I, I might yes, be like. The Deep. I've read The Deep. I said that. Oh, you do. Okay, um, yeah. but, but anyway, so Model Home is, a, is like a haunted house story and i'm very interested to see how reverse solomon does haunted house mm -hmm. oh yes there is another book i don't own it there's like a sci-fi book that is a little younger skewed i can't remember the name of it uh, and, you know reviewers uh, um, listeners will might be able to leave it in the comments or something um but i did i have read three i think reverse solomon books but anyway, so this is about the Maxwell siblings. They keep their distance from the lily white gated enclave outside of Dallas where they grew up. When their family moved there, they were the only black family in the neighborhood. The neighbors acted nice enough, but right away, bad things, scary things, the strange and unexplained began to happen in their house. Maybe it's some cosmic trial, a demonic rite of passage into the upper middle class. Whatever it was, the Maxwells steered by their formidable mother stayed put unwilling to abandon their home terrors and trauma be damned as adults the siblings could finally get away from the horrors of the home leaving their parents all alone in the house but when news of their parents death arrives um they're forced to return to texas and then you know things are going to ensue from there and i just i'm here for a here spooky for read i'm here for Absolutely. river solomon a new one and i i can't wait um yes and it's just it's giving like I, it's giving that's all i'm excited um, yeah so then my next one i'm just gonna pull it up because i i have i'm not as prepared as naomi but sword crossed by um by freya marsk is out from bramble which is tours new like romance -y kind of arm mm -hmm. of of their of their books and i really liked uh her other series she she did um uh, which is escaping me right now what it's called um but anyway, she has another tri trilogy that she just finished um and and so when i saw this it sounded really 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 good uh this is a cozy low the cozy low stakes of legends and lattes meets a scorching bodyguard fantasy um so we have Mantinesh and is a dutiful heir to his struggling family business and, and needs to hire an experienced swordsman to serve as best man for his arranged marriage. Sword challenge to at the ceremony could destroy all hope of restoring his family's wealth, something that Matty, oh, that's much easier to say, has been trying and failing to do for the past 10 years. What can what he can afford, unfortunately, is a part-time con artist and full-time charming menace, Luca Pierre. And then they're going to fall in love. That's that's all you need to know. They're going to yeah. fall in love. It's going to be swash, swashbuckling. It's going to be wonderful. I'm expecting, you know, witty banter, a good time. Oh, The Marvelous Light, The Last Binding Trilogy, that's what it's called, um, is the trilogy she wrote before this. Am I gendering her correctly? Hopefully I have not screwed that up. But I I, I it's it's really good. I I I I really enjoy the writing and I can't wait to read more of it. And yeah. 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 I like it. It's good queer fantasy. I know you want me to move on. Oh, it's still me. It's still me. <laughs> uh so <laughs> next i've actually already read this cover so this cover is so great 
So I wait to read that. If you've been here uh, any amount of time, you know that we interviewed CJ Lead for yes. her debut novel, Mayfly. This is her sophomore novel, American Rapture, and it is so good. I made Jess Owens read it so we could talk about it because you won't read ebooks. So <laughs> this is out from Tour Nightfire. It comes out on October 15th. You'll just have to read it when you can have a physical copy. Yes. This is like a, a zombie kind of apocalypse novel, but it's also a novel about deconstructing your faith and about sort of cults and family and it's so good it says so much it is so gory and wonderful and fast-paced and it is it is great it is so wonderful um i just love cj i love the things that she writes uh i like the way that she tackles different social things too in the way that she in in the horror books she writes uh so i i'm here for more for more of CJ Lead. Whatever she writes next, I'll read it. Also, she's Still a pretty me. cool chick. She's she's pretty awesome. She's pretty forking awesome. Um, and then I do have more. I think I have like the next couple books here. Sorry. Sorry, Naomi. Naomi's got like <laughs> this December on, like in the bag. Um, <laughs> but we're this is kind of in conjunction with the a discussion we're gonna have later and uh something that i'm working on and that's writing like the wind which is a new biography about the life of sonora bab who wrote a book that is eerily similar to grapes of wrath um and john john steinbeck may have had access to her notes uh prior to writing the grapes of wrath so there is some question about how much is unintentionally or intentionally stolen from sonora bab but anyway she's a really interesting woman uh this is a a and there's not a lot of biography about her, but there's been more discussion about her recently. And so it was really nice to see that there is something coming out on the 15th of October that's yeah. going to give more color into her life and her existence. Um, she grew up in Oklahoma uh, back, I think she was born 19 something, like 1920s, maybe 1905. I have it written down somewhere. But anyway, so she is, she's just a really interesting woman. She barely graduated from college. She barely had any education, but when she did, she was, you know, ferocious about learning. She started working in journalism. She started working with the different like camps and stuff for the migrant workers during the Dust Bowl. She is fascinating. And um, I can't wait to get my little teeth into this. Yeah. Book. Yeah. So, and then it's still me. Are you, are you surprised? Ooh, that's an interesting cover there. Yes. So this is the stuff that I find fun about doing these is that I don't, I'd never heard of this before. And then I was putting together my list and I was like, well, wait a minute, this sounds interesting. So this is Masquerade by Mike Fu and it comes out on the 29th of October. And it's a surreal, queer coming of age mystery set between New York and Shanghai. And that is really all I needed to know to uh, want to yeah. address. Uh, but basically, newly single Meadow Liu is house sitting for his friend, artist Salem, Sel, Selma. I, oh God, that's not even a hard word. Selma Shim, <laughs> Shimizu, when he stumbles upon *The Masquerade*, a translated novel about a masked ball in the in 1930s Shanghai. The author's name is the same as Meadow's own ch in Chinese, Louis. Tian, I'm saying that wrong. I apologize to any Chinese listeners. A coincidence that proves to be the first of many strange happenings. Yeah. They explore social, cultural, and sexual identities in New York, Shanghai, and beyond. Mm. It sounds like it's going to be a good. I like how vibe. that sounds. Right? Yes. Oh, wow. Well, it's just me for a while. Okay, Naomi, you better wow. just rest your voice right up because we have The Service Berry by Robin Wall Kimmer. I loved writing Sweetgrass. I have been yes, reading her. I did. I did. I did love it very much. It's very good. I think everybody needs to read it. And they have a new book coming out. And I just, I, I, I don't, I honestly don't even care what it's about. I'm going to read it because I find the way she talks about nature and the environment and how that intersects with uh, indigenous life, a native culture. I love it. Um, as indigenous scientist and author of Braiding Sweetgrass, Robin Wall Kimmer harvests service berries alongside the birds. She considers the ethic of reciprocity that lies at the heart of the gift economy. 
how she asks, can we learn from indigenous wisdom and the plant world to reimagine what we value most? Our economy is rooted in scarcity, competition, and the hoarding of resources, and we have surrendered our values to a system that actively harms what we love. Meanwhile, the service berries relationship with the natural world is an emboldened, is an embodiment of reciprocity, interconnectedness, and gratitude. I, just, I love, I love. That does love sound that. good, though. Doesn't it? Yeah. I know it's not like I know it's not your thing, but I, I'm here for it. Yeah, I'm here for it. Um, I promise you're gonna have to talk at some point. Uh, City of Nightbirds. <laughs> <laughs> I oh, I didn't say who that was out by. Um, that's out by Dutton, by the way, Service Bay. And this is out from Echo City of Nightbirds by Ju Hey Kim said that wrong. Sorry. Um, so this is about ballerinas. Oh. So once a famous ballerina faces a final choice uh, to return to the world of the Russian dance that nearly broke her or to walk away forever in this incandescent novel about redemption and love. We're, uh, it's 2019. It's the White Knights in, in St. Petersburg. And we have Natalia. She's a ballerina. She has a, two years ago, she had an accident that stalled her career. She was once once one of the most celebrated dancers of a generation, and now she turns to pills and alcohol to numb the pain of her past. She is unmoored in her old city as the ghosts of her former life begin to resurface. Her loving but difficult mother, her absentee father, and the two diff- and the two gifted dancers who leapt to her downfall. Mm. It just I I mm. I mm. painting a vivid portrait of Russian ballet world of of the Russian ballet world where cutthroat ambition, ever-shifting politics, and sublime artistry collide. Now that sounds good. Yeah, that is... Yeah, that, I'm surprised you don't have that on your list. That sounds like a you book. It is a me book. Who's that coming out? Uh, who's uh, That's the That's Echo, and it comes mm-hmm. out on November 26th. Mm-hmm. And then finally for this chunk, I swear I'm going to let Naomi talk, is that Marisha Pessel has a new book coming out. It's mm-hmm. called Darkly. It's out on the 26th as well from Delacorte Press. I have no idea what this is about. I just saw her name and went, okay. Yeah. Oh, this is for middle age. It's his middle age. Um, so. Hmm. Arcadia Dia Gannon has been obsessed with Louisa Veda, the game designer whose obsessive creations and company darkly have gained a cut a cult like following. Dia is shocked when she's chosen for a co- highly coveted membership along with six other teenagers from around the world. Why her Dia has never won anything in her life. Darkly, once a game making empire renowned for its indigenous indigenous nope, wrong book, ingenious and utterly terrifying toys and games now lies dominant dormant i can't read i need to put my glasses on after veda's mysterious death the remaining games are priced like rare works of art and with some fetching millions of dollars at auction as dia and her fellow interns delve into the heart of darkly they discover hidden symbols buried clues and a web of intrigue who are these other teens and what secrets do they keep why were so why were any of them really chosen and the answers lie within the twisted labyrinth of darkly mm. and we all know how marisha pestle likes to write like a hmm. interesting mystery i'm gonna put my glasses on so if i have to read I, anything else i can see it <laughs> i like her we both really loved her book night film and mm. i will be reading um what is it something Special in chemistry calamity something yeah i'm gonna be reading that soon with all the other dark academia books I have lined up. So special topics in, in calamity, calamity phys- in calamity yes. physics. Yeah. So I'm definitely going to be reading this one when it comes out for sure. Mm-hmm. I, I, I really, I like her a lot. I do too. This looks like it's written for a younger audience, but I'm down. I'll give it a try because I like her. Yeah. Guess what? You get to talk. It's 2025. Okay. It's sure. All right. I'm interested in Aboriginal people stories. Um, This is Tracker by Alexis Wright, and this is a collective memoir of the charismatic Aboriginal leader, political thinker, and entrepreneur Tracker Tilmouth. 
Taken from his family as a child and brought up in a mission on Crooker Island, Tracker worked tirelessly for Aboriginal self-determination, creating opportunities for land use and economic development in his many roles, including director of the Central Land Council of the Northern Territory. I just want to read the story. I just want to know about it. Um, I want to get more educated on what these folks have gone through and what they've been striving for. So I think that this is a good place for me to start. And this comes out from and, and other stories on January 7th, 2025. Tracker, Alex is right. Hmm? You also need to read Praiseworthy. Well, I'm not reading that yet. I have all three of her books. I have The Swan Book. I have Carpentaria and Praiseworthy. I'm going to read my publication order. Okay. Yes, that is my plan. Who's that guy that I follow traveling through stories? He's always turning me on to people. He's the one that turned me on to Alexis Wright. And it was at the end of last year. And I just went ahead and ordered all three of them. So I'm excited to get into her. I know you love Traysworthy. It's just, it's, it's, it should have been nominated for a booker, but they're stupid. <laughs> okay, what's next? <laughs> okay. Um, I've got that pulled up. I am always interested in a good crime story, especially something that involves like someone made significant changes to make something work better to help victims of horrific crimes. This is The Secret History of the Rape Kit, a true crime story by Pagan Kennedy. Uh, and it says, Mary Goddard dreamed up a new crime solving tool, a kit that could help rape survivors fight for justice. This investigation tells the story of the troubled, heroic woman who kicked off a feminist revolution in forensics and then vanished into obscurity. So it was 1972 when Martha was working, uh, well, volunteering um, at a crisis hotline, counseling girls who had been molested by their fathers, their teachers, and their uncles. And she was trying to figure out why are so many of these predators like basically getting away with this uh, crime? And there we go on and learn how she created or invented this uh, rape kit. I am so interested in this story because, yes, how did that come about? And my God, if we didn't have it today, there would still be so many rapists just walking free, living mm -hmm. their lives. So uh, this is a very highly anticipated read for me. And this comes out uh, from Vintage on January 14th, 2025. Mm -hmm. And hopefully these dates remain correct. Yes. Yeah. All right. Next. Ooh, yes. Eric LaRocca. This is at dark. I become lonesome. Lonesome. Uh, what did I read from him last year? Um, I don't remember the name of it, but man, that was my first LaRocca. And I just love how, how dark he is and just like so menacing um, in the stories that he writes. Um, so it says a single line of text glowing in the darkness of the internet written by Ashley Luton who has often thought the same and worse in the years since his wife died and his young son disappeared. But the peace of the grave is not for him. It's for those he can help. Ashley has constructed a peculiar ritual for those who desire to die as they're war with their yearning to live a better life. I just know that whatever's in this book is going to uh, probably shock me uh, and probably gross me out. And I'm very excited for it. I, I I adore this guy. It is my intent at some point to read all of his other past books in his backlist. So that is at Dark I Become Loathsome by Eric LaRocca. And this comes out from Big Bald Head on January 28th, 2025. Bring it on, LaRocca. All right. Next. Next. Hang on. That's the wrong one. What's that? The Pink Hotel? Mm -hmm. Pink Agave Motel. Okay. All right. All right. The Pink Agave Hotel. And uh, who is this by? I've lost my place, guys. Anyway, I'll get to it. So it says readers are invited to the Pink Agave Motel, where brutality and, and intimacy ooze across the pages, exploring the depths of the unhinged imagination and how human desire unlocks the impulse to bite. Castro's voice. Oh, B. Castro. That's the author. Castro's voice, influenced by Mexican folklore and a feminist perspective, illuminates a deeper view of how unrequited love affects every type of being alike. That is all I needed to know. I am so in. I don't know who this author is, but I am so intrigued by that brief description of this book. And I cannot wait 
to read it. Even the 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 cover design, it just it makes me so curious. Like, I like what is cover behind design. that door? What is going on? So I'm very psyched for this book. So that is the Pink Aguave Motel by V. Castro, and that comes out from Clash Books on February 11th, 2025. So how I have one more. <laughs> okay. And that's Wild Dark Shore by Charlotte McConaughey. I probably said that wrong. I really am terrible at names. Why do I have any sort of thing where I talk? Uh, so it's, this is the author of Migrations and Once There Were Wolves. And this is about a family living alone on a remote island when a mysterious woman washes up on shore. Uh, so we are on a tiny island not far from Antarctica. And we're with Dominic Salt. And he has three children who are caretakers of uh, this home on this tiny island. Um but the sea water levels are rising and the salts are now in its final inhabitants. Uh, they're packing up the seeds before they are transported to safer ground. Despite the wild beauty, isolation has taken its toll on the salts. Raph, 18, and suffering from his first heartbreak can only find relief at his punching bag. Ben, 17, has started spending her nights on the beach among the seals. Nine-year-old Orly, obsessed with botany, fears the loss of his beloved natural world and Dominic can't stop turning back towards the past um, and the loss that drove his family to the sheer water, this place in the Antarctic in the first place. And then during the worst storm of the, uh, the island has ever seen a woman washes up on shore as the salts nurse the woman Rowan back to life. Their suspicion gives way to affection and they finally begin to feel like a family again. Mm. Um, Rowan, long accustomed to protecting her heart, begins to fall for the salts too, but Rowan isn't telling the whole truth about why she set out for the sheer water. And when she dis discovers the sabotaged radios and freshly dug grave, she realizes Dominic is keeping his own dark secrets. As storms on sheer water gather force, they can they trust each other enough to protect one another and the precious seeds in their care? And can they finally put the tragedies of the past uh, behind them to create something new together? Just I I need to know what's happening. I on like this how island. that sounds. I need to. I just need to know what's happening on the island. Right, wild dark mm -hmm. shore. Okay. Well, that's out March fourth from Flatiron Books. I need to know. I love Flatiron. Me too. Yeah. Anyway, the next, the last three are all you, baby. All right. Okay. We've got Goddess Complex by Sanjana Satyananda. I hope I said that right. It says, Son Sanjana is trying to recover her life. It's been a year since she walked out on her husband, a struggling actor named Killian, at a commune in India after a disagreement about whether to have children. Now Sanjana is struggling to resurrect her busted anth anthropology dis dissertation and crashing at her annoyingly perfect sisters while her similarly well-adjusted peers obsess over marriages, mortgages, and motherhood. Sanjana needs to move forward and finalize her divorce ASAP. I mean, come on. It's like, it's for me. It is <laughs> for you. You know, marriages, complication, you know, motherhood, a woman trying to reclaim who she is as a, as a person. It's it's all me. Uh, this, this comes out from uh, Penguin Press on March 11th, 2025. So excited for that. Next. The Antidote by Karen Russell. Karen Russell wrote that book called uh, Swamplandia, which I do own, but have not read yet. Um, so I am intrigued by this. It says the antidote opens on Black Sunday as a historic dust storm ravages the fictional town of Ooze, Nebraska. But Ooze is already collapsing, not just under the weight of the Great Depression and the Dust Bowl drop brought beneath its own violent histories. The antidote follows a prairie witch whose body serves as a bank vault for people's memories and secrets. A Polish wheat farmer who learns how quickly a hoarding blessing can be become a curse. His orphan niece, a basketball star, and witch's apprentice, a furious flight from her grief. A, vo a voluble scarecrow and a New Deal photographer whose time-traveling camera threatens to reveal both the town's secrets and its fate. What? Yes, count me in. I want to know what this is all about. <laughs> I want to know. Uh, this comes out from Knopf on March mm -hmm. 11th, 2025. I do plan to read Landia first, though. But finally. Yes. VHS uh, by Chris Campanioni. That's probably wrong. 
Uh, it says, while collecting the scattered stories of his parents' and tagal passages to the United States, the narrator begins to record the material onto video cassettes through a series of cutting and grafting, splicing footage of his present dislocation and overlaying on the audio track the polyphonic voices of his inherited exiles. VHS reminds us, and its narrator's insistence on meditation, that the slippage between speaker and listener experience and memory is also a fault line that can reveal our own prior movements. What's exciting me about this book is like structurally, what is this going to look like and how's it going to come across to me as the reader? Mm -hmm. This just piques all of my interest. So this comes out from Clash Books on March 11th, 2025. And that's, that's it. That's, what that's we got. it, folks. And there's lots of other books, but like that's all we got. <laughs> yeah. What are you all looking forward to reading um, during these fall and winter months? What's what anticipated reads are on your list? Let us know. Let us know. Yeah, because there were a lot of things, um, and so it'd be interesting to know what everybody else is looking for in terms of reads for the there's end so of much. the year, beginning of the next year. Yeah, yeah. And fall is time. always a heavy like release season. It so, is. you know, this this list could have easily been like 40 books for each of us. Like, it's just so much. Yeah, right. I was impressed by your restraint. I, w I am learning, right? I am learning to you like are. tone it down. <laughs> you are. I'm very proud of you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay. It's time for some book wrecks. It is time for some book wrecks. What you got? What you got? I've got, um, I was reading a lot of depressing things. So I picked up uh, The Day the Death, The Day Death Stopped, which is a Rebecca Thorne book. Um, mm. It's a little bit more, I feel like I, I thought this was a mystery, but I guess it's maybe not fully a mystery, but it's, it's about essentially two witches. Uh, and in this witch world, there's always like one head witch. They're called the Zaro. And like one is born in every generation and, okay. you know, kind of a little Buffy the Vampire Slayer moment. And, you know, when the Zaro dies, a new one is takes its place. And there is always one, except for this one year where they two Zaros are born. And magic kind of flows between them. And it's interesting because the you know, the current Zaro has to pick one of them to train up. And who do you yeah. pick? Why? What happens to the other one? Um, and we see how they end up building a relationship, even though they're not supposed to. Uh, and there's how they they grow up um, together and the way they interact and how they, what happens to them ultimately in the end. Uh, there's also this idea of, stopping death uh and why we had to stop death and that's kind of the mystery that you're solving because you start with the um boy that has been raised to be the Zaro uh stopping death and claire who's the girl uh who also could be Zaro. um she she he stops death for her and why does he stop death and what happens to us and how did we get here and it's really interesting i really enjoyed it's just a good time it can it's funny at times because claire is really funny um and the it's just interesting and a good time it's just a fun read and i would pick it up if you're just looking for something sort of fitting with fall october vibes just a little past yeah. the time have a good time uh there is uh some discussion of abuse in this uh it's it's not fully without um substance i guess it's not just like a cozy you know little fluffy read there's some some, some stuff to this uh but it's it i loved it it was really good just That's a good time great. just a good time i always read rebecca's books so yes you do I, uh, I, that came out, she did that as like a secret project of maybe a year or two ago and I just hadn't gotten around to it yet. Um, so I, I finally got around to reading it. So, yeah. And it was like it. perfectly timed. It was like what I needed at the moment. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I am recommending Scaffolding by Lauren Elkin. This book. So great. Um, I am holding the UK copy. This came out in June. Uh, which I pre-ordered, uh, but the U.S. 
um, edition came out this past Tuesday, which was September 17th, I believe. Um, and it's out in the U.S. from FSG, if I remember correctly. Anyway, scaffolding. Loved it. We got these two married couples who lived in the same um, unit, but 50 years apart. Uh, we opened with uh, Anna, who was a psychoanalyst, and her husband, David, who is living in London because that's where he's taking a job. They're still together, but he's working in London. And she is kind of trying to um, heal from this miscarriage that she recently had. Um, and she finds herself having to go to therapy herself. And um, she's no longer seeing clients of her own uh, as recommended by her therapist. And she's uh, entered into this uh, project of remodeling her kitchen. And she meets Clementine, um, who is a new um, neighbor in this building as well. Um, she's a young woman who's a part of this uh, radical feminist movement. And uh, she just moved in with her boyfriend, uh, Jonathan. And, you know, they build uh, a friendship. Um, and then we are 50 years prior in the apartment with um, Florence and Henry. Florence is a student. Um, she's married to Henry and she desperately wants to be a mother. And Henry does not want to be a parent and um, he is terrified that she is going to constantly bring up the fact that they should have a baby. Remember in the Welcome Back episode, we were talking about uh, liars and talking about how men and women think differently and how we have all these different points of views. What mm -hmm. I liked about parts of this book is, so like in part two, when we're focusing on um, Florence and Henry, there are all these different sections where like they are in a particular moment and we will get to read Henry's point of view and then we'll get to read Florence's point of view. And it's just so interesting just seeing like the things that we assume that other person is feeling and thinking. And we get to like see that play it out on the page and realize often how different it is, how the other person does not get it. But also how we do not share those feelings on the inside. Typically, we kind of like hold on and harbor them and just let them like fester um, mm -hmm. inside of them brings about more issues in the relationship because everyone is kind of uh, uh, assuming what the other person thinks or feels. Um, mm -hmm. And so you never get anything resolved. I really just love the breakdown of these couples in this book. Um, things get very messy, very intertwined. Um, it is also a story about like desire. Desire runs very deeply throughout this entire novel. Like the desire, the desire to be, you know, considered equal to men, to, you know, to be a mother, um, to be who you are. And just so much desire. And fidelity is also a big issue in this book. But I just, I loved it. I, this is a me book and I loved every minute of it. So that is Scaffolding by Lauren Elkin. Oh, and I have a book review on this on my new Substack. And we'll be discussing that when I read it. Indeed. Mm hmm Indeed. That's another episode. It is. It is. So many books. Mm -hmm. So many books. So many books. So many books. All right. Mm -hmm. Well, are we wrapping it up? We've done our job we here. We are wrapping up. We've done our job here. We got one more thing to film, and then I need a nap. Yes. Yes. All right, folks. I'm sounding better, but I'm still tired. She needs a nap. She has a little cold. All right. So that's going to do it for us. Uh, follow us everywhere at TBR Lowdown. Visit our website, tbrlowdown.com. Leave a review for the podcast and share it with a friend. That's going to do it for us. We are out of here. Bye. Bye. <laughs>